So hi. Um, yeah, so welcome to Breast of All session on um, tandem feeding and feeding multiples. Um, so as I said, I am Jennifer Hanradi. I am one of the co-founders of Breast of All. Um, and one of the first years that we ran Breast of All in person was in 2017. And we had one amazing mum that came along to that and was talking about tandem feeding. And it was something that I had never come across before wasn't even sure what it meant um and I remember just kind of picking up a few little bits and pieces um from that session and it just kind of sowed the seed that it is it is possible um to feed more than one um more than one kids at, of of different ages at the same time um and so I have a five-year-old who is absolutely obsessed with milk um and I was I was first pregnant when she was about two and that was I kind of knew that I was like I was I was happy for her to continue feeding she was in absolutely no rush to stop feeding and um, we had kind of night weaned um to try to get periods to return so fertility re could return so we could try for another baby um, and that worked out and she kind of reduced her feeds but then I think by the time we got pregnant, she was like, great, I can have as much milk as I like anytime I like. <laughs> um, and then when I got pregnant, it was really, I think I wasn't really prepared for quite how sore it was actually at the beginning. Um, so I remember at the beginning of pregnancy, it being just like, and I, I'd had a very easy journey with, um, with, with Ema at the beginning, we never really had any major issues. So it was quite a shock to then be pregnant and be like feeling like really really tender really sore like she, she even just looked at a boob and it was <laughs> sore um and it was very very much related to kind of hormones um and so that that kind of initial stages of pregnancy were quite difficult of and and I did feel like we need needed to get to for her to re drastically reduce the amount of time that she spent um on the boob because it was it was really quite painful um throughout the beginning of pregnancy uh, but then unfortunately we lost that baby um which was something that was obviously the, the loss was very um emotional but the for me because I was getting to the point in pregnancy where the milk supply was starting to dry up it actually made me realize that that was the thing that I was actually really distressed by the idea that actually I might that the milk might go because for my older one, it was such an important thing for her. Um, and so, but actually after losing that baby, the milk supply came back with a vengeance, of course. So she was delighted with that. Um, and then um, a few months later was pregnant again. And the same experience where just that, that early stages of pregnancy, it was, it was quite painful. Um, and I found myself trying to use lots of different breathing techniques to try to relax and be calm and also just limiting the amount of time that she um she was on the boob and also having that experience which I hadn't experienced before of that kind of aversion that feeling of like oh god get off me <laughs> that really strong and I kind of I, and I was aware that that's something that um quite a few people will experience um in pregnancy and with tandem feeding um and it was that really strange feeling of like I love you but get off me. <laughs> um, but we, we we powered through. Um, and I think around about sort of, it was kind of a bit later, it was maybe around 30 ish weeks, um, where there was there was definitely no milk there. And she, um, Emer used to say she still wanted to have milk. And I think occasionally I would have like, you know, like expressed the hand expressed like a tiny little bit. And it was like, almost clear. It wasn't like, um, colostrum in that kind of yellow sense but it was almost like clear and it was really salty and that was like, was like why is it salty is that a kind of a natural thing for the body to try to get the older one off <laughs> um and but Emer was still happy to continue um kind of dry nursing as much as she could and she did that right um right throughout the pregnancy um and right up and actually I think um it did help in terms of inducing labor um at that stage and then um little ben came along and it just was feeding emer just meant that i had no issues at all with establishing supply when it came to feeding new baby it just went so smoothly 
and it was so easy. And I remember actually going into a couple of the groups at the time because you know that feeling of like when you have your first baby and that those first, the first little while um, you get like you get very full and a bit uncomfortable and then it's maybe about six weeks ish that it kind of settles down. But actually, because I'd been feeding Emer the whole time, that 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 only took like two weeks. So I had kind of just two weeks of like feeling quite full and quite and uncomfortable, you know, that initial stages. And after two weeks, it was just like totally settled. And it just made the whole process really, really smooth and really easy. Um, the one thing that we did have to deal with during pregnancy was that um, Emer was starting nursery. She was three and we had to actually get her down to having 10 second feeds only because she started to have explosive diarrhea <laughs> uh, because when the colostrum came in that has a laxative effect and so for Emer any the more colostrum she got the worse that got and then the poor thing was starting nursery so we really didn't want her to be having any accidents in nursery so we had to like cut drastically cut down um but then once Ben arrived the milk, milk came in quite quickly and so she was very happy to um to feed away and it was great for those times where there was maybe a blockage or you felt a little bit full that Emer was just like on hand to to sort that out um for us and I think the other thing with tandem feeding which has been really lovely that I think at the beginning when Ben was very little I did still have some times where I felt that kind of aversion feeling or just that little bit claustrophobic almost where there was kind of two of them there but that did dissipate once kind of I think probably once after a couple of weeks when kind of milk supply had settled down and then just it's just lovely for the two of them that they something that they do together and like they hold hands just like it's the cutest thing and they they hold hands with each other and like Ben actually will like stroke her hair sometimes and so Ben is going to be two in October and Emer has just turned five and the two of them still have milk and they only really have milk in the mornings or in the, in the mornings and in the evenings um, and that's really the only time that the two of them will will have their feeds together but it is just a lovely a lovely thing that they do together to the point now that um, they open the boob for each other just like Ben will come over and he'll be on and then he'll try to pull it down the other side to open it for Emer and point at it so they're like come on and he knows when the milk is coming down so he'll say he'll like shout come off and shout her name and then point to invite her to her side so yeah all in all it's a it, it is such a lovely experience um and it's not without it's challenges going through pregnancy and continuing to feed but I think it's been such a lovely thing in seeing the two of them um just how they are together and how lovely they are to each other and I think for Emer it was a lovely thing for her that it was something that her and the baby could share together and that that's from you know from from the moment that Ben arrived it's something that they've they've shared and that's been their little time together so it's great and then also when I am tired and need both of them to be quiet I can just <laughs> sit and they can sit and uh, yeah it's been a great experience so that's that's me really I can see there's there's already um lots and lots of chat happening um and please continue with that and yeah I'm just going to hand over to Ivan to, to chat about her experience thank you so much Jim um so I'm Ivan I am a mum of three I have a four-year-old daughter who will be five in November and uh twin boys who are just about 28 months, so about two and a half. Um, so I've actually just recently uh, stopped feeding the boys um, in the last sort of two weeks. Um, so yeah, I, I, to be honest, I never thought that I would get to 28 months feeding twins. Um, I always just said from the get-go, you know, I'll give it a go, I'll see how it goes. Um, would love to get to sort of a year because I fed my daughter for 13 months. Um, that was a very sort of straightforward feeding journey. Um, aside from all the sort of new mum stuff and all the confusion and all the misinformation that you sort of get about breastfeeding and, and sort of navigating that. Um, but then when I found out I was pregnant with twins, um, I think I'd already decided um, when I found out I was pregnant again um, that I would breastfeed again. You know, that was always just something I had planned to do. 
And then I found out it was having twins and I was just like, okay, so I'll be breastfeeding twins. We'll just, we're going to give this a go. We'll see how it goes. Um, and I think the number of raised eyebrows that you get when you tell people that you plan to breastfeed twins is it's like, why would you do that to yourself? You know? And it's like, because it's something that I want, it's what I know. This is how I know how to feed my, well, that's what I did with my daughter. So it's the only way I know uh, to feed. Um, so, and I'm quite stubborn as well. Like uh, part of me was kind of like, well, yeah, I can do this. Like take your raised eyebrows and away you go, <laughs> you know, um, I'll give it a go and we'll see. So that was always my sort of attitude towards it. And my husband was always so supportive. I remember even before, when we were talking about trying for another baby, I remember distinctly having a conversation with him and saying, you know, but what would you do if, like, say I got pregnant with twins, like in terms of breastfeeding? And his response was, you have two boobs. And I was kind of like, all right, okay. So he, he'd support me in this and he thinks I can do it. So sure, like, not that I knew at that point. Um, but then, so when it came to, the, to find out that I was pregnant with twins, I was like, right, I've made that decision. That's something I'm going to do. Um, and then, so during my pregnancy, um, I have identical twin boys. Um, so for people who aren't familiar with uh, twin pregnancies, there's a number of different sort of types of twin pregnancies. Um, and identical twin pregnancies tend to be more higher risk. Um, and my boys were being closely monitored for something called twin to twin transfusion syndrome, um, which is a sort of... Um, it's a, a disruption in the, the blood flow between and um, because they shared a placenta it was a, a, like an unequal share of the the flow of, um, between the placenta so it meant one of the boys had a lot less fluid around him in the womb um, and that his growth was slightly restricted and the other one was having a bit too much blood flow um, and he had a lot more fluid around him um, and so they were monitored really really closely throughout pregnancy um, because you know, if it had got to um, a certain sort of threshold, then they would have considered um, intervening and, and doing surgery. So it was quite a stressful pregnancy for me, kind of reflecting on it. Um, and so from the get-go, we always knew that there was a chance and like a very, very high chance that the boys would be born prematurely. Um, we were always told because of the, the twin to twin risk um, not to expect to deliver beyond 36 weeks um but that it will more than likely be before that um and so in the end we ended up um I had the boys at 33 weeks and four days so they were almost seven weeks premature um and because they were so little um Fekra was 4.3 when he was born and Oshin was five pounds um and I'd had an emergency cesarean because they were kind of worried about the, the flow in the placenta um, and they were just kind of whisked straight off to NICU so I didn't get to see them when they were born I didn't get any of that lovely sort of skin to skin or anything like that and um, it all happened very quickly I didn't really have a chance to have a discussion with anybody about feeding preferences or like even birth preferences or anything at that point it was just very much like get the babies out and you know get them make sure they're safe or whatever um so my husband then was allowed to go to NICU with the boys and I was brought up to the ward um and well sorry in recovery sorry when I was in the recovery room someone from NICU a nurse came down and um sort of just asked very like how do you plan to feed you know and for me there was a sense of not a lot of interest in what my response would be and I was like I will be breastfeeding you know no I, I please don't give them formula especially with them being so little and I had done like a lot of reading around um NEC I can never pronounce it properly sorry I could probably pronounce it better um but you know and some of the risks of, with prematurity and the importance of breast milk for preemie babies um and so that was something that I was that kind of reinforced my um desire to breastfeed the boys it was very much that like that was something that I really wanted to do so I don't know if you want to jump in and maybe pronounce that for me NEC is it necrotizing enterocolitis or something like that yeah yeah that's it <laughs> um so 
that was something that was very important to me um, to do from the outset. Um, so I was given a little pack with like a little booklet in it and some sort of sterile syringes and basically told, well, if you could, you know, express and get it up in the as soon as possible, um, you know, and we'll, we'll start getting the, you know, that the syringe feeds to the boys. And I'd asked about donor milk at that point because I was like, well, can they have donor milk? Um, because, you know, I obviously might not have enough for both of them immediately. And this one, but now it's not a reflection of everybody in the hospital, but in terms of my experience, um, it was, oh, it was relayed to me that that was for the extremely sick babies. And I was made to almost feel like I was taking something away from babies who needed it more by asking for that. But I was just like, well, I want them to be breastfed. So I'll do my best. I'll get expressing, but can they just have the donor? I was just like a bit cheeky. I was like, well, okay, I understand, but I want it. <laughs> um, and so the boys were receiving a mixture of donor milk and my milk for the first couple of days. Um, when they were, I, yeah, I don't know. If we get into the breakout session, I can talk to people a bit more about the NICU experience and things like that. I tend not to focus on it too much because I don't want to scar anyone and it's not everybody's experience when they have twins um but just in terms of my initial experience um of breastfeeding it was very much around it was expressing and the boys were tube fed because they were so little um and they hadn't really sort of they weren't always awake enough to attempt to latch and they were so wee I think that they hadn't really developed um the these this the reflexes um to, to breastfeed sort of independently. Although we we did, um, you know, the NICU nurses were great. They were extremely supportive of, so once I got up onto the ward with the boys and, and was able to visit them in NICU and stuff, you know, was very encouraged to do a lot of skin to skin and just even having them lying on my chest, you know, on my bare chest. And, you know, they would do a lot of that rooting behavior and stuff, um, but they were tube fed for, um, almost the duration of time that they were in NICU, which was about three and a half weeks. Um, and But we were lucky in that it was really just around establishing feeding. So they were just trying to um, feed and grow is what they called them. Um, and then once they were feeding like completely off me for 48 hours, then they were discharged um, home, which was amazing. Um, and I think at that point, um, That's when I, it sounds silly in a way, but it's when that's kind of like for me when my breastfeeding journey started because in the hospital, I felt like it was very dictated by the medical staff. The boys were on feeding schedules, how much, how often, you know, and I was just like the lady who went to the hospital and pumped the milk, <laughs> you know, and, but I was, you know, I did it and set alarms in the middle of the night and, and sort of did it and all the rest of it. But it was just, there was something amazing about getting them home and just doing things the way I knew how to do it. Um, and breastfeeding became like a really important part of how I parented the boys and how I mothered them and establishing a connection with them as well, because we'd spend so much time apart. Like I was tried to be at the hospital as much as possible, but you know, I have the other girl, like um, I had more in at home as well. So it wasn't always possible. So for me, that became a really important way to connect with the boys. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of went with the flow and I I think I had, I was lucky in that I had experience on my side. I had Jen as a friend. Um, I had a lot of friends who had breastfed previously as well um, and just did a lot of reading up on what to expect and what the sort of early days, you know, all that, the, just reminded myself about things like cluster feeding, um, growth spurts and you know, just continuing to, to feed on demand. And actually when we got the boys home and they fed on demand, their weight gain, the, like the trajectory of their weight gain was much sort of steeper when they got home and were feeding on demand compared to when they were on a feeding schedule in the hospital, which I always found like really interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I just took it one day at a time. Um, initially it sort of said to myself, I would love to get to a year because I'd fed my daughter for 13 months. Um, but then I found 
you know just stressed myself a wee bit too much being like you have to do this you have to get to this goal and it was just like just take it as it comes just see how you go with today tomorrow next week um and then here we were 28 months later and still feeding um which I never would have believed um sort of in the early days I think one of the things that got me through the most was my I had a really supportive family and a really supportive husband um and I just let other things slip in terms of priorities you know the housework all that stuff that you drive yourself crazy about and you know I think sometimes as a new mum you're like we'll have to do this and people are going to come and I was very strict in saying to people I I'm not I don't want visitors you know the boys aren't an attraction we're not ready for visitors we're just home from the hospital I'll let you know when you can come and see them and just setting a lot of ground rules which I had never did as a first time mum you know and so some of that overwhelm and um some of those things where you feel obliged to entertain other people a lot of that was set aside um asking for help my mum used to come down and do my washing she used to come down and mind the boys while I got up in the morning to have a shower and get myself dressed for the day before she went to work um there were times where I phoned my husband and work and was like no I'm having a terrible day you need to come home and help me you know and he would have just been on the bus home and obviously by the time you get home I was probably fine but just a lot of the things that I had maybe been afraid to do as a first time mum in case someone said oh like you're not you're not coping or you're not you know but it's hard having two new wee tiny babies relying on you all the time so my biggest piece of advice would be ask for help and take help um, and just take every day one step at a time um, but yeah that was a bit of a whistle stop tour um, and if anybody has any questions or anything I can ask uh, um just let me know sorry yeah no that's brilliant thanks so much Ivan um I do, there's a question in the chat um I'll just ask you now and then what mm -hmm. we'll do we'll go into breakout rooms so anyone who wants to chat with other twin mums can go into the twin room and anyone who wants to chat about tandem um can go into the tandem room and if mm -hmm. there's anyone who has like very specific questions or support issues um Sarah's going to stay in the main room um and answer any questions um from anyone who wants to to stay but there is um Jeanette um, has asked uh, a question about whether I know and I know you've talked about this before did mm -hmm. they feed together or separately so actually that's a really good question because I think one of the immediate things people ask you as a twin mum is how do you feed two babies at once you know and it is slightly different from tandem feeding because they're both the same size um, and you don't maybe have an older one that you can explain you know positioning to or something to get comfortable um, for me, I had really, really bad aversion to feeding both boys at the same time, um, like to the point where I felt nauseous and like my skin would be crawling. And that, that sounds horrible to say to anybody who's not familiar with it, but I think it was just a lot of sort of um, like physical sort of overwhelm for me and it was so I as much as I could I tried to feed the boys separately um, and I always sort of described it as triaging so who was who started crying first okay like get you on get your feed get right you're settled now the other one has got upset and left him and give him a feed or having one sort of on my knee while sort of nursing the other one um, and I just realized you can't see my arms so I would have been holding one you know in this position the cradle hold while rocking one on my knee or in a bouncy chair um but there were times where you know obviously I had to, to feed both of them at the same time um because they were maybe getting really upset or were very hungry or tired and it was just more practical for them and for me to do it together so I think it's a matter of preference um and I think a lot of people think that you have to feed both of them at the same time every time, which works really well for, for some twin mums. But um, for me, I tried to do them separately as much as I could. They always woke at different times in the night as well. Um, we never did any sort of sleep training or anything like that. Um, and if one was sleeping, I didn't wake him because I didn't want to, you know, just if, if I got a bit of sleep, then that was great. So I never did the whole like wake one when the other one's awake either. Um, which I know some people do, but again, I think it's just personal preference for things like that. That's brilliant. Thanks so much, Yvonne.
Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open um, the breakout rooms. Um, so you'll mm -hmm. see there is a room for multiples and the room for tandem. Um, and we will pop ourselves into to the room. And if anyone who wants to stay and ask um, Sarah a particular question, you can just stay um, in here. And I'm going to stop. Um, I'm going to stop the recording as well. So um, 